Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. This, this is a very important video. It touches on what I'd say is one of the single most defining parts of World of Warcraft's development past the Warlords of Draenor era, and that is systemization. You are going to see today the impacts that it's had, both positive and negative, on the game, and how, as we go into Shadowlands, just about nothing is more important than our ability to talk around and to grasp this topic. And we're going to go hard in this. I want to hear what you think. Blizzard wants to know what you think, and I kind of know to send it to. We've put a bunch of work in the form below, and through that, you will be heard. I will be sending it their way. Look, we all love World of Warcraft. We all want it to be great, and this is how we're going to support its team. Now, another thing that I love, and a thing that my team uses, is today's sponsor, Dashlane, the password manager that, of course, makes the internet far more secure, but also makes it far more convenient to use. And they've also got dark web scanning, a VPN, and a bunch of other features, plus you'll get 10% off with my code at the link in the video description. Now, Dashlane generates high security passwords for each of the sites that you use, and then through its extensions, it automatically logs you in. And that means that you actually won't have to manually type in a password again, and that even works on mobile phones. All your info is locally decrypted using your master password, and that means that if even Dashlane themselves were hacked, well, it would be like breaking into a bank, but uh, finding out that the bank doesn't even have the keys to the vault. So yes, it is completely secure. Also, if a site that you use is hacked, well, Dashlane will send you a security alert. You get all of those fantastic features in one app across all platforms, and if you follow my link and use promo code Bellular, you will get 10% off. So, a big thank you to them for supporting our team and what we're doing here, and with that, let's get into the video. With 8-3, look, I'm all for visions. I am beyond excited to get back raiding with the boys, but I've also got to be real here. This patch, you know, it's a rigid, repetitious gameplay loop, I think more so than most other patches. Now, that might be fine for me, but we've got to be real here. That sort of stuff, that's only part of an MMO, and it's not really that exciting to people. Now, I mean, like, my 8-3 guide content, it's performing really badly. And generally, you know, if the preparation guide, the review that, you know, the gearing guide, if that stuff doesn't do well, that does kind of suggest that mm, maybe people are not that excited about things. And looking at some other numbers that I've got access to across other uh, outlets, I mean, yeah, sort of seeing a similar thing. I mean, even polling my Twitter audience, which, you know, you would think are the most engaged about people, most people were, uh, you know, sort of neutral to mixed on it. And, uh, I mean, if you look at the top comments and just about anything to do with 8.3, you know, a lot of it is about things being overly complicated, about, you know, systems and top of systems, and just this big sense of apathy. And, you know, I don't think it's a vocal minority, right? I don't think that's what we're dealing with. I mean, if you look at all of BFA, I think you see one thing, systems. You see a game that is driven by transmedia a narrative story, but actually in-game is driven by systems. And I think we've had far less of that other stuff, you know, this expansion than in other ones, you know, like the order halts, the mounts, the class mounts. So with that, let's talk about system scope. I think this is, this is almost certainly the most important part of this video. Modern World of Warcraft systems are these massive self-balancing things that pretty much encompass the entire game, that are extremely impactful on just about everything. Think about your essences. Think about Azerite gear. As an example of, you know, when I say a self-balancing system, you know, it's kind of like you've got the core of a system, but then all of the potential problems, you know, the Blizzard flag up with themselves, uh, you know, they kind of try to build in a solution too. So, you know, Azerite gear, right? Well, it could be a problem for players. Tweak it too much. Okay, well, let's do reforging. But, uh, you know, is that going to be too much traveling between town and stuff? Okay, well, we don't really want people to reforge it that much. So, ah, uh, yes, it'll double in price every single time you do it. And then, you know, every two days or one day, it'll half in price. It's a perfect self-balancing system. We won't need to worry about it. We'll just put it in. And that's a system that, you know, they, they modified a bit, but pretty much stuck with. It's the things like that that really do dominate a lot of the game. Of course, less so with Azerite than I think was initially planned because they pivoted away from that and over to the Essences system. And then, of course, with Essences, well, Essences have been very game-encompassing because that is where I would say most of the class design change and feel of BFA actually came in. So you're probably wondering, well, why do people want those, uh, you know, the, like, essences on all of their characters? Why do they want that to be account-wide? Well, I guess it's kind of like if you logged into Legion, you progressed your main a whole bunch, uh, but then, you know, you looked at all of your alts, 
and you had to do a massive amount of work to actually get your core class changes in there. Now, in Legion, you had to do a little bit of that, yeah, getting your new, you know, artifact and things like that, but it didn't take overly long, probably not as long as getting a full set of essences. So people kind of feel like they're being punished by this massive game-wide encompassing system that is the essence system. And then I think when they look at patch 8.3, what do they see? Well, they sort of see, okay, you do your assaults to get your currency, to do your visions, and it's just sort of all a big loop. And then they think, well, what, like, that's the systems, but what is the content? What is the emotionally resonant content? What, where is the Suramar? Where is my class mount? Where is the mage tower, the chromie, right? That kind of, like, nugget of adventure. It's not there. It's, it's just not there. And I think this over-reliance on these massive self-balancing systems is uh, really what has caused a lot of homogenization of content in the game and really has caused a lot of apathy because people just kind of think, oh, right, it's that kind of system. Well, I've experienced that before. Therefore, it's not going to feel new. Therefore, I'm apathetic and I'm not that excited. And that's basically what's going on with World of Warcraft right now. And I think also, and importantly, and thankfully this is something that Blizzard maybe are quite aware of, it does lead to less player agency. I mean, when you feel like the devs have just laid out a bunch of tracks in front of you, you know, where it's just like, yeah, this is the things our players are going to do, it's going to take about 16 weeks, and uh, technically it's infinitely progressible, players are just going to feel like they've got no agency. Like, the best they can do is be on par. And I don't think that's particularly exciting to most players of the game. Now, thankfully, for Shadowlands, Blizzard have constantly said that player agency is the core. But that said, there are systems like, say, corruption, you know, corrupted gear that are not seemingly not exciting to players that have been, you know, done by Blizzard in the name of player agency, maybe not working out that well. I mean, certainly the Covenants, the way you are so locked in and that your class design is actually tied to the Covenants. Again, I think that is a massive red flag for uh, for Shadowlands. It's very worrying to me. That is another example of an expansion spanning system that actually homogenizes some content, gives players a bit less options, and uh, I mean, yeah, just makes you feel locked in. And that is my worry. It is this big reliance on massive systems that drive the game. And it really does feel like the systems designers are really the people who are pushing this game forward, but I think in reality, it is that feeling of what is a new adventure my character can go on? What is the cool new looking gear that my character can get? You know, like with the tier sets. I mean, yes, the tier set bonuses, they were quite fun. But actually, a lot of why people wanted those sets is because it was the new set for your class from the new raid. And that was exciting to people. It is that stuff, I think, that is really being lost in this system soup, where BFA, I think by virtue of being, I would say, a lower budget, lower content expansion than Legion, so we're really just left with the systems, and I think that is really just exposing many problems that World of Warcraft has right now, and I think many problems that do just stem from the way the team currently develops the game. And from that, I want to move on to another point that has just been consistently a thing in, I mean, in just... I mean, every content, or every bit of content that I've made on 8.3 since BTR, and that's confusion. 8.3 stuff is more complex than it needs to be. I mean, you've got your Vessel Horrific Visions, you've got your Coalescing Visions, your Corrupted Mementos, and, you know, it all just feels like it's a little bit much, I think, to many people. Uh, you know, Corrupted Gear, it's more complex than Titan Forging. Titan Forging is just, you get a bit of gear, you know, maybe it gets a bunch of item levels slapped on it and a few things. There you go. To most people, that's all they really deal with. But with Corrupted Gear, it's like, you get your Corrupted Gear, it's got its pros, it's got its cons, you've got all these debuffs, you've got to manage all your stuff. To a lot of people, that just feels like an overly bloated, complex system. Now, I am not advocating for more Titan Forging. What I'm advocating for is no Corrupted Gear and no Titan Forging because I really don't think the game needs either of them. I think it's another example of the over-systemification of World of Warcraft, just that, you know, in this case, it's applied to loot. And it's applied to loot in such a way that, you know, the numbers of your character are the core thing of progressing your character instead of the journey and the experience of your character, which I think is more encapsulated by things like getting your class mount, getting your mage tower, those really cool things that are kind of your character story through Azeroth instead of just being, you know, ping-ponged along a pretty defined system and getting more gear so you can just keep on going through the system. 
So I think you get my point there. It's the sort of thing that is fine for theory crafters and a certain segment of very gameplay focused people. I mean, honestly, it feels like it's designed for the Diablo or the Path of Exile audience, less so an MMO RPG audience. And I mean, I do say this with the utmost respect, but I do, you know, I do know that a bunch of the top, uh, the top people, the top brass on the Warcraft team, you know, they originally were a bunch of theory crafters from the Elitist Jerks forum. And, you know, back then I was actually reading a bunch of their posts and really enjoying the content. But uh, I also do feel that DNA in the content that the team is currently producing. It kind of does feel like it is for theory crafters, by theory crafters, very, very clinical, very systematized, very, you know, Excel spread sheetable content. And I feel like that is going to be a misfire with a lot of the catchment of World of Warcraft. And that's what leads me on to my next point, emotions and systems. So when a game is like super system driven, I think it can often risk just feeling a bit lifeless and a bit devoid of variety because, you know, when everything's got to fit into a system, as I said with the Mythic Plus dungeons and the world quests and all that stuff, if it's all got to fit into the same category of content, guess what? It's all going to feel the same. Island expeditions. Every single island looks different feels the same, and I think that is something. It's a real emotional misfire for players. I just think it means that a lot of this new content doesn't excite people because it feels like it's the same because everything is just, you know, encapsulated by these massive systems. I think that's a really big problem. Now, note here, I'm not talking about the sort of natural systems of a virtual world, like the economy. I think that's a really exciting sort of system, and that's really what brings me on to what I think actually brings people to World of Warcraft. Now, I think some of those are systems, like with the economy, you know, this feeling of being in a vibrant world. We've got the, you know, the gatherer supplying the crafters who are building things for the raiders. You know, it's not EVE Online, but it feels quite natural of an interaction. But there's a lot of other things that are a bit less systemic that do emotionally bring people to the game. And you've heard these words from me before in this video. Good examples, order halls class mounts. If you go back to Warlords of Draenor, the idea of having your own garrison, yeah, it didn't turn out that well, but at least, you know, on the outset, it was pretty exciting to people. Even take Cataclysm, you know, it revamped the world, took people on a new adventure, at least so they thought, people cared about that. Take, uh, you know, take Wrath of the Lich King, where you had a real notable villain, and you also had the phasing tech, and the phasing tech meant that when you were going through the world, you'd have a whole bunch of technical issues, but more importantly, it would feel like your character's story was, like, actually advancing, you know? When you pushed through the Argent Vanguard, you did all that stuff, you built the Argent Tournament, yeah, it was old content, it's not perfect, it doesn't hold up perfectly right now, obviously, but I think you get my drift there. You know, if you take, uh, say, the Molten Front or the Argent Tournament, both of those things, I've sort of talked about this before, but like the Argent Tournament, you know, it is a new system in the game, but it's a system very much designed for its purpose, for that patch that was set aside later. It was just meant to be its own little thing. Uh, but it's a system that actually allowed you to advance through a certain fantasy that your character was going on as it progressed through the theme of that patch. Uh, if you look at the Molten Front, again, it was just doing some dailies, but the way that you expanded the Molten Front over time, you got some of your new, you know, the new narrative quests, same thing happened for patch 5.1. I think those are both really simple, good examples of making systems-driven-ish content that actually is resonant with players. I mean, hell, even the Isle of Keldenas, right, one of the earlier patch islands, earliest, yeah, like earliest patch island that they did, I think that's, a, you know, all a pretty decent example of something where they did it really well, but if you actually apply it to a lot of the modern content of the game, they really did it less well. I mean, Argus, I don't feel like it had that kind of, just that kind of like immersion in its progression, like past just the storyline. Najatar, I mean, Najatar had a really weak main quest, and then it was just world quests. It was kind of just world quests and dailies, things that we know. I don't think that was overly exciting. And so when you look at the new assaults and you're just like, ah, it's kind of feels similar. You know, I'm just going to the place every day and sort of doing this stuff. Eh, I think that's kind of the reaction that a lot of players have. And I think that's what causes a lot of the apathy. I think they look at this stuff and sort of think, well, how can I progress my character in a new and interesting way that is not item level? And to that question, patch 8.3 has a few cool mounts and basically nothing else. I mean, the tier sets are gone. There's, there's just not as much else. And so yes, really, it is those core story things that really do drive people into the game. And indeed for BFA, uh, you know, Sarfang, right, Sylvanas, all those things, they drew, you know, massive engagement from, from the fan base, but that actually wasn't in-game. And if you look at the in-game plot threads, I mean, we covered Kaltaras, we covered Zandalar, we covered Najatar, we covered Mechagon, we did Nihilotha, we did Zalatath, like there are so many plot threads in this expansion, but none of them ended up having enough time to actually come together in a really satisfying manner. 
because it was so systems driven and the big exciting lore moments, they were not really in-game content, they were big cinematics that released on the World of Warcraft YouTube channel. And I really think that just has led to people not being in the way of playing the game. I think they've kept up to date with the world of Azeroth, but actually being in Azeroth when it's just a bunch of homogenized systems, I think they're a lot less excited. And that does bring me to one thing that I think could be an explanation for all of this, and that's budget. I mean, BFA is a pretty low budget feeling expansion as compared to Legion, right? Like with Legion, you know, you had your zones, you had Suramar, you had a whole bunch of dungeons. You know, we got a new dungeon with patch 7.2. We got a new dungeon with patch 7.3. We got Karazhan in 7.1. If you then look at this expansion, it's kind of like they built Najatar and then they kind of realized, oh dear, this expansion is not working. We'll do essences. Oh dear, we, you know, we, I, I've got to imagine, like, based on the data mining, there's, like, three other Warfronts, so I've got to wonder, you know, is there a lot of other Warfront and Island development that they just had to throw in the bin that has led to this, you know, being a similarly expensive expansion to make than, uh, you know, than Legion, but a whole bunch of stuff being cut, sort of leaving you with this, uh, you know, just a bit devoid husk of a thing. And I think it's really just A3 that's, that sort of came out with that. I mean, as somebody who right now is content to be gameplay driven on Discord with my friends, doing some visions, doing raids, that's perfectly fine. But if I think about what actually got me into playing World of Warcraft and what usually gets me excited about coming back into a new patch, that's a new setting, it's a new experience, it's that kind of stuff. It's the more emotional stuff, the more RPG parts of the MMORPG. At the end of the day, you know, you can play Destiny with your friends in Discord and maybe have a more action-packed experience. Uh, there's so many other genres of games that now have MMO-like social elements that World of Warcraft trying to compete only in gameplay and progression loops, I think is really missing a trick because Mythic Plus Dungeons, Destiny Strikes, Destiny Raids, WoW Raids, sure thing. What has World of Warcraft got that's super unique? It's that world, right? It's that world, it's that deep lore, that history. And I think that's really what this oversystemification of the game has just led to Blizzard not focusing on. And I feel a lot of that is just because the development team just got caught in a real systems-driven sort of development. And I think a lot of that's needed, a lot of that's really good. Some of the systems that they've made are really quite fantastic, but I think it is revealing that that's not enough to hold up the game and that really their core efforts, I think now have got to go in other places. I think they've really got to think about the emotional reasons why people play World of Warcraft. They've got to think about how they can make their content feel more different. And I mean, fundamentally, they've got to think, well, what if we want to do a dungeon that's totally different? That's a puzzle like a traditional, you know, a real traditional dungeon that just does not fit in a time trial because that's what they turn dungeons into. They turn them into time trials because that's the perfect self-balancing, infinite difficulty scaling, infinitely re replayable Mythic Plus system that mostly is great, yes, but also is kind of limiting. And, you know, if a new patch came out that had a new dungeon that was totally different to any other dungeon we played before because it just had brand new mechanics, I mean, that could be really exciting, but right now it doesn't feel like that's possible. And that's a dungeon example. I think you have that in class design. I think you have that in world content. I think you have that in gear, in just about everything in the game. It is these massive game-wide systems that are supposed to be, I think, one-stop solutions to most of the gameplay. And I just don't think they're working. I think in Legion, you know, we had many of the same fundamental problems that we've had in BFA. Just in Legion, all the numbers were turned up to 11, right? Yeah, it had so many problems, but by the time you got a few legendaries, you had your artifact weapon ability, you had loads of stats, your rotation was super fast, the GCD change hadn't been made. You know, it didn't matter that some of those systems were a bit of a dud. You just felt so powerful, you could carve through all of it, and while the systems may have been a little bit tiresome sometimes, you could always go do some, you know, fun side content that was different, like Chromie, like the Mage Tower, like the class mounts, yada, 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 etc. You get my point. So there you go. That's me talking about the over-systemification of World of Warcraft and just a bunch of the problems that I think it is leading and how I think it's quashing the creativity of the World of Warcraft dev team. And I think that that quashed creativity of the team is leading to content that's less emotionally resonant for players. And I think that's leading to more apathy. We look at the art team of World of Warcraft, they make absolutely incredible stuff. But I think that all that beautiful, different looking art that's just gorgeous, that's industry leading. Unfortunately, I think the massive 
game-wide, oppressive systems, they make it feel the same, regardless of how different it looks. And that means that the world of Warcraft, because of this over just feels smaller than ever. And I think that is the little kernel of why people are a bit less excited about the game these days than they have been in the past. But of course, I want to hear what you have got to say, and through the form down below, there's a way for you to do that. And we're going to send that over to Blizzard. And look, I, you know, I can't guarantee you it's going to get to a developer. I can give it to Lore, though, you know, and maybe he'll pass it on, maybe he won't, maybe he'll ever read, and maybe he'll, you know, just get some data, maybe it'll make him, you know, just, uh, who knows, right? I'll give the guy some data, maybe we'll see how it goes, I'll, I'll do the same for my EU contacts. Uh, but, you know, I think that's a positive way, that we can actually come together and we can give them our honest feedback, we can give it to them in a digestible way, and uh, maybe that could help. You know what, I think it's the best we can do, and because we care about this game, it is probably what we should be doing. So, that is, that's it. That's it for this video. Be sure to check out that Google form. I really want to hear what you've got to say as well. So yeah, with that, I mean, just let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching this video. I know it's not been the most fun one. It's been a bit rambly. It's been a bit, uh, just, you know, not super hype. But at the end of the day, I think these things are really important. And as we're going into the Shadowlands beta testing experience, probably in the next three months, it's more important than ever for us to have, I guess, this positive activism. I mean, we can accept that the game's in a, a bit of a rough state, and then we can just sort of tear it to pieces. Or we can, you know, try to identify why it's not working and try to help Blizzard, try to give them our feedback and really make this as good as it can be. Because do any of us really want this game to go down the, you know, just to, you know, sort of fade away? No, no, we don't. We want it to keep on going. We want it to keep on going. We want it to be as good as it possibly can be. And that's what this is all about. So thank you very much. With that, I will see you next time. Thank you.